If you've ever found yourself going into your practice room and just noodling about aimlessly without being focused and you're not really making much progress on saxophone, you've come to the right place because this week I'm going to show you an awesome practice plan that you can follow no matter how much time you've got. And over time, as you do this every day, you are going to make real progress on saxophone. And the best bit is I've even got a really cool wall chart and a bunch of stuff to practice. So you're never going to be lost for practice materials. Let's get straight into this without further ado. Today I'm going to run you through the five things that you should be practicing every day in every practice session and the good thing is you're never going to forget what to practice because I've got this really cool wall chart that you can download for free using the link that you can see right there. You can print it off, put it on the wall of your practice room and you're never going to forget what to do. So that said, let's look at the first thing you're going to do which is the warm up and sound development. The first part of your warm up is just to do a very short amount of breathing and in the PDF download there's also a breathing exercise that you can follow. It's quite simple, you're going to take a nice full breath into your belly and expand your chest but keeping your shoulders nice and relaxed, okay? No shoulders rising up, so it's just you're going to put one hand on your chest, you're going to put one hand on your belly. And you're going to take a few big breaths just to really dial in that powerhouse of your sound. Straight after that, you're going to grab your mouthpiece and we're going to do some mouthpiece drills. I like to do a mouthpiece drill. It's called How Low Can You Go? That is also included in the PDF download. It's quite simple. You play a note and then you pivot down to different notes and try and get as low as you can using different voicing shapes to bring the pitch of the mouthpiece down. so on and so forth all the way down trying to reach a whole octave on your mouthpiece. This is all covered in detail in my Total Tone Mastery program. Then you're going to grab your horn and we're going to do the overtones tone matching exercise. <laughs> and so on and so forth all the way through that exercise. Now, one of the cool things about this wall chart planner is I'm not telling you how many minutes to spend on each thing, but when you look at the side for each category, you'll see a percentage, and that is the percentage of your available practice time that you're gonna do for each segment. So for your warm up and tone, you're gonna spend 10% of your practice time, okay? So if you had 100 minutes, you would spend 10 minutes on that exercise. Now, if you had an hour to practice, that would of course mean six minutes on this, and you should be able to run through these overtones pretty quick once you, once you get used to it. The great thing about this warm up is you put air through the whole horn, you're really opening up your arm machine, you're really opening up your sound and that tone matching exercise is also in the PDF download pack. Oh, there's so much cool stuff in there, I'm telling you. And then there's some extension work if you've got a bit longer. You can work on this, uh, if you've got Total Tone Mastery, you can work on my Spread the Love Long Tones exercise as well if you've got some, uh, some extra time to play with. The second category once you've warmed up and once you've worked on your tone, is to work on your technique. Now, the first thing we're going to do is scale progressions. Now, I say scale progressions, but before the scale progressions is just being able to play your scales full range on the instrument. So if you're a beginner, the first thing you're going to want to do is just be able to play all your major scales across the full range of the instrument. They're all written out on the PDF, and you can also find my video, my scale practice tool video, which has got the metronome, it's got the fingerings, it's got all the notes. It's the, the ultimate scale practice tool to help you get to grips with your major scales, your melodic minor scales, your harmonic minor scales, your pentatonic scales, and your blues scales. And you should also finish with the chromatic scale, although that isn't listed there, but always do your chromatic scale as well. So 
That's your job. Now, once you can play all those scales to a reasonable speed and you can do them evenly, then it's time to go into scale progressions, which you would do your scales in thirds, you do scales in triads, you break up your scales into seven chords, and you can do them on all the different scale types. Believe me, that is really going to sort out your technique. Now, there's other extension work that you can do to improve your technique. One of them is the faster fingers exercise, which is also in the PDF. And that sounds like this. <laughs> and so on and so forth through all the keys. Like I said, that Faster Fingers exercise is in your bumper practice pack. Uh, and there's plenty of other stuff that you can do to improve your technique. You can work on patterns. I've got my favorite fourths pattern in the download. You can also work on your articulation, on your vibrato, or if you've got some technical etudes or studies that you're working on, the technique segment of your practice is a great time to do it. And that is gonna take 20% of your practice time. <laughs> Okay, moving on to the third segment of your practice, which is gonna be skills. You're gonna work on certain skills to improve your saxophone playing and your musicianship, and it's gonna take a quarter of your practice time, 25%. So what you wanna do here is pick out a particular weakness you've got or a particular area that you're focusing on. Now, this could be forensically analyzing the phrasing of a solo, listening to the original and copying it exactly, that's a great one. You could practice your articulation. There's an articulation drill <laughs> right there in the practice pack. You can work on technical skills from the, uh, that your teacher has given you or from an online course like Total Tone Mastery, Improvisation Mastery, or something from inside the Inner Circle membership. You can work on one of those technical exercises. You can practice harmonics. Um, you can practice altissimo. You can practice chord tone exercises, so taking a standard and playing the chord tones in different patterns going through it. You can practice transposing. There's just an endless array of things that you can work on that you are not very good at at the moment. It could be palm key technique, it could be low notes, it could be subtone, it could be vibrato, it could be any of these things that you should work on as part of your skills. I mean, vibrato could come under the technique bracket as well, to be honest, as an extension there. Work on something which is gonna make you more skillful as a sax player, and that is gonna take up 25% of your time. But like I mentioned before, don't forget to get your free wall chart to print off and put in your practice room. It's a nice big resolution. You can blow it up if you like. I've put the full thing next to me there so you can see what the whole wall chart looks like. It's got everything that we talked about, and it's got those really important reminders about how to practice. But you don't only get that, you're gonna get this massive PDF with a bunch of incredible resources which is really going to help you nail all these different areas of your practice. There's so much cool stuff in there. It's like Christmas for you as a saxophone player. Just fill in your email, help yourself. It's completely free. It's my gift to you. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy your practice and I really hope you make real improvement based on these tips. <laughs> Now that you've got all the focused technical stuff out of the way, it's time to move on to the fourth segment, and that is repertoire. This is playing actual material, you know, songs, tunes, real stuff that you would perform in front of an audience. So just glancing down at my notes, which you can see on the wall chart, you could learn or improve a song that you like. This is where you're gonna play your actual tunes that you love playing. If you've got a gig coming up or an audition or you're working on a show, this is the time to work on the material for that stuff. You could play along with a backing track or you could use Tom Play to play some of your favorite songs. Um, if you've got a teacher who's given you pieces, that's the time to work on your pieces or, or um, songs from an online course or a program. Again, like Total Tone Mastery, Improvisation Mastery, something like that. If you have some books of transcriptions, you could practice your sight reading and work on some of those solos because really they're kind of like pieces as well. And you could practice your improvising on a song that you're working on. This is all under the heading of repertoire, which is the stuff that you're actually going to play in public. You're going to get better at that. That's going to take the biggest chunk of all your practice time. It's 35% of your time you're going to spend on repertoire. <laughs> So by now you've already had a really, really awesome practice session, even if it's only 20 minutes. <laughs> but there's one more thing which I've left till last, but do not leave this out because it's gonna be so beneficial for you. And that is to transcribe something. Now, it could just be two notes. It could be one note, it could be a tiny phrase, but listen to something that you love and try and work out just a few notes of it. Or if you're more advanced, start working out maybe a chorus of a solo. 
and you're going to develop your ear, you're going to develop your phrasing, you're going to develop your rhythm, you're going to develop your language in which you're playing. It's super important to transcribe stuff inside the bumper uh, practice planning pack that you can download. I have got my guide to transcribing, which is really going to help you move through that process. But don't leave out the transcribing bit. It's only 10% of your practice, but believe me, this is 10%, which is really going to move the needle for you. <laughs> So far, so good. You know exactly what to practice. You know exactly how long to practice it for. And in the bumper planner PDF down there, you've got your wall chart up there that you can follow and you've got loads of resources to keep you on the right track. But we haven't talked about how to practice. And that is just as important as what you practice. So let's run through the key points because this is the thing which is really going to give you real progress on saxophone. If you don't practice right, you're never gonna improve. You'll just noodle about, you'll reinforce mistakes, and you're not gonna get anywhere, my friend. So let's cover these points real quick, but remember, this is the secret source. Okay, so let's have a little look at my notes. Number one, you're gonna stay relaxed, and you're gonna be patient. Rome was not built in a day. You've got loads of time, you've got years ahead of you, so take your time, be nice and relaxed, and be patient. It will come if you practice consistently and effectively. The next thing is to practice slowly and methodically with good technique. Never bumble through things too fast and keep making mistakes. For example, if you're doing your scales and you find that you're playing your scales like this, and you think that's gonna help you improve, you are so wrong. You need to get that metronome on, that's gonna be the next point. You need to play it slowly, methodically, and with good technique, and make it really accurate if you're gonna make any progress. Now, it might be frustrating, but it's the only way. So instead of playing your scale like I just did it, play it more like this. Believe me, even if you have to play it slower than that, you will make much, much better progress in the long term if you play things slowly and method methodically, that's easy to say, with good technique, good hand position, good breathing, nice relaxation, good embouchure. And that's kind of closely tied in with the next point, which is to use a metronome and isolate problem areas. This is massive. Do not go back to the beginning of your scales every time you make a mistake. Stop. If you make a mistake, stop right there. Just stop playing, all right? Isolate that little bit that you made a mistake. Do it much more slowly than the other parts until you can get it up to speed. Now, normally this is gonna be on the palm keys and the low notes. So let's say you're doing your C major scale and you hit a problem. Stop, regroup. Look at that problem area, isolate it, slow your metronome down until you can play that part smoothly, even if it's much slower than you can play the rest of the scale. And eventually, you'll be able to play that problem area at the same speed as the rest of the scale. Then you join it up and flow it back into the full scale. There will be problem areas in certain scales. You need to isolate them. That's the only way you're ever gonna make progress with your technique and with your development. If you isolate areas and use a metronome, the metronome does not lie. It is a truth meter. Okay, let's look through these other points. Check your tuning, but don't get obsessed. Okay, we're now in this tonal energy mindset culture, need to have the smiley face. You know, the uh, tuning sensitivity is set to, to uh, 100% and you're a couple of cents off and you think, oh, I'm out of tune. You're just watching this blooming phone the whole time trying to get this stupid smiley face. A few cents here and there is not gonna make a difference. Even if you're like 
15, 20 cents off. You know, you're pretty close to the ballpark. You know, that's only a fifth of a semitone. You know, I'm, I'm not saying play a fifth of a semitone out of tune. I'm just saying keep the meter there as a reference, but do not spend your entire time looking at the smiley face or the needle on your tuner, trying to get it absolutely perfect on every note in a performance situation. That does not happen and you won't notice it. If you're playing pretty well in tune, believe me, you can use your ear and your throat to fine tune your tuning as you go and you'll be playing in tune. So do not get obsessed with your tuning. You're gonna waste your time. Consistency and accuracy brings results. Consistency and accuracy. Most people don't know the meaning of consistency or accuracy. Accuracy is the things we mentioned. Play it correctly. That will send the message to your brain what to do with your hands, the exact motor pattern. And when you go to sleep, your brain will embed that a little bit better for the next day. If you just practice your stuff and you're playing it all sloppy, your brain will embed that. It'll embed how to do it badly and you'll never improve. And it's much harder to undo bad habits, believe me. So be accurate and consistency. If you're consistent and you did five minutes practice consistently every day, you'll improve much faster than doing an hour once a week, believe me. Finally, here's a really important thing. Tomorrow is another day. So be kind to yourself. Don't sit there in the practice room beating yourself up with negative self-talk. If you're always saying, oh, I suck, my sound is bad, I can't play this, this is so frustrating. It's supposed to be fun. <laughs> this is like a hobby that you're supposed to love. <laughs> so have fun, try your best, be focused and disciplined. But you know what? If it's not happening that day, don't worry about it, man. Tomorrow is another day. You can always come back to it and do better next time. That is the beauty of the practice. It's the journey, not a singular destination. That is all we have time for. What was that with the air drums and my fingers? Never done that before. <laughs> Never gonna do it again. Anyway, I hope you really enjoyed this week's free online saxophone lesson. You, of course, have been watching Get Your Sax Together. I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson. I hope you enjoyed it. Believe me, this is the key to making real progress in sax. There's no other way. If you don't do it slowly and methodically, you're not gonna make progress. You know, you might get a few little things together over the years, but you're not gonna make the progress you want. So stick with the program. Okay, until next week, where there'll be more awesome content to help you make yourself a better saxophonist. <laughs> really great outro this is, isn't it? Make sure that you practice hard, practice smart. Today's all about practice smart. And most importantly of all, enjoy your music. Take it easy, guys. The link is right there that you can see there. Oh my God. I'm a Start that again, shall we? And put on the wall of your practice room. <clears throat> frog in my throat, frog in my throat. Which is repertoire. Just shake the camera, why don't you?